Hey guys, Brian with Thunder Laser USA. I uh, wanted to go over a few things on the uh, Thunder Laser Nova head on the Nova Series machines. Um, technically, technically that's a head. Um, that's the head assembly, but we call our two inch head and our Bean Buddy head and our four inch head as such, just because that's kind of what's stuck. So when we talk about the four inch head, we're talking about this four inch lens assembly. And this is the Bean Buddy. And this, of course, is your stock two inch lens. Now, there's a couple of things about this. You don't want to use autofocus when you're using either of the two uh, performance lenses. Uh, on the stock lens, uh, you can. Now, I want to show you a few things about this head or about this lens attachment. Um, first of all, you will need at some point to uh, remove this quarter inch airline or six millimeter actually, but quarter inch works. And there's some teeth on the inside uh, of there that hold that thing in place, kind of like a compression fitting, and it's spring loaded. And if you'll notice the outside collar, this plastic ring around the outside, you can depress that. And when you do, you can just lift the tube out. And I typically stick it back behind there to get it out of the way. Now, you're gonna be messing with this head, the actual head assembly, some when you do beam alignments and things like that. And uh, the mounts are pretty similar, uh, but the way that works is there are three silver bolts here uh, that actually cinch it down and keep it steady after you adjust it. And you adjust it with the brass thumb screws and the stop nuts. And that m moves that mounting plate around so that you can do your alignment. And the other two mirrors have similar mounting plates. Um, this one, the laser beam goes in and is directed down 90 degrees. So you also have to worry about if the beam is vertical in here, because if it touches the inside of this small nozzle, you can see uh, some artifacts like uh, double images or loss of power, it won't cut and things like that, or your red dot may be uh, not as visible as it should be. Now, there's a distinction to be made here. The red dot and your invisible CO2 laser beam that does all the work travel along the same steering systems and what I mean by that are the mirrors and the lenses. Uh, they are combined with a, lean, a beam combiner in the back uh, that sits between mirror one and the laser tube. But that doesn't mean that you can align this laser using the red dot. You should not use the red dot as a reference to determine the accuracy of your beam alignment because the red dot is actually dialed in after you do your beam alignment. And we'll go over the beam alignment and adjustment in more detail a little bit later. So this is just kind of an overview. Now on the two inch lens, you can manually focus. Uh, you can release this brass knob and it'll loosen up and you can remove that. And if you'll notice, there's a blue stop ring on here. And that stop ring is the reference point. So the autofocus distance matches the distance here. So when you want to use autofocus, you always want to make sure that that is pressed all the way up against that stop and that then you can use your autofocus and this will be at the right distance for the surface of the material now if you're cutting something you can autofocus and if you want to focus let's say three millimeters into the surface then you can just loosen this and drop it three millimeters now once you do that you always need to bring it back up uh, and let it touch the stop again and you always need to leave your machine with the two inch head in there do not leave the four inch if you'll notice it's quite a bit longer even when it's pushed all the way up and what can happen is if you leave your four inch head in, uh, your honeycomb will end up looking like this because the bed will come all the way up on a reset and this four inch sticks out way farther and it'll dig into the honeycomb and drag it across the honeycomb and tear it up. And that's what happened to me. That's what all these uh, ridges are in my honeycomb. But I do have to say, it didn't do anything to the head. It, it was solid as a rock. I didn't have to realign. It didn't bend anything. It didn't break anything. All it did was deform my honeycomb. So that's a, a really strong gantry uh, to be able to withstand that kind of force. So <clears throat> and again, if you want to change these, uh, you just loosen up the knob and then insert whichever one you want. Now, one thing you need to do is be sure you keep these clean. And that's true with the mirrors too. Now this is the stock two inch head and it's got the normal orifice, the little small two millimeter or so orifice in the end on the nozzle. And when you remove the nozzle, 
it will reveal the lens underneath and that needs to be cleaned regularly very regularly and I am gonna have a specific video uh, just for that uh, on the on the lens cleaning same with the other now this one has two optics in it uh, it's a multi element so you'll have one in the top and one in the bottom the nozzle comes off the lens tube comes off and then you can access the spanner rings on each side now there's a special tool for those and it looks like this so when these come in your toolkit don't throw them away you'll need them uh, because they're spanner tools for this and also for your mirrors so that you can remove your mirrors to clean them um, I believe they do recommend in the manual that you can use a q-tip to clean them but you need to take these out every once in a while all three of them and really clean them and really look at them and really inspect them uh, I typically remove mine every time and uh, with that tool you just loosen that nut and unscrew it and then use a piece of tape uh, sticky side out wrapped around your finger and press on the back of the mirror and it'll lift right out and then you can clean it and uh, your kits may come with the cleaning well they will they'll come with some cleaner uh, mine came with the microfiber towels the new machines are going to come with foam tipped swabs that are made to clean optics uh, so that's going to be a little different still you can you can clean them with the swab but you still need to take these out and and really clean them and really look at them good now as long as you're not too rough with this you won't have to do a realignment as long as all this stuff is set and your your backup screws you know are cinched down good uh, to hold everything in place so that's the way that works um, like I said, there'll be a separate video on the actual cleaning of the lenses and the mirrors as well as alignment and some other things. But I just wanted to go over a few things with this head that were important. Now, I told you a while ago about if the beam is not vertical in the head. If that's the case and you notice your nozzle is getting hot or you're getting a double image or you're not cutting or you're losing power or your red dot is faint or not there, you can take this small orifice nozzle off and in your toolbox you have one of these that has a larger orifice. This is to diffuse the air for engraving. Uh, I'll use these on acrylic a lot. The thing you have to remember is you need to keep your air pressure up enough where you have positive pressure inside this nozzle so that the smoke won't get up in there so easily. But you can put this on and then if your beam is strong or if your issues go away you're pretty much uh, sure that your verticality of your beam is off and then we have documentation on how to adjust that too here on mirror three so that's just a little bit uh, about the head assembly and the adjustments and what they're for and removing the airline and again we will have some more specific videos uh, and tutorials about how to do the preventative maintenance uh, and beam alignment and things like that so that's what I've got for you today and uh, we'll catch you next time.